Thank you, Derek. And thank you for joining us today, John. Um, are you at home? Yes, I am um, at my house right now. So it's a beautiful day in LA and excited to be here. Yeah, we're so happy to have you. And it seems with each passing year, you just seem to get busier and busier juggling more and more projects. So what's on your plate right now? Uh, I have a lot on my plate right now. Um, I am uh, in sort of pre-production on uh, Wicked, which I'm doing, which is the musical movie that I'm doing for Universal currently, um, starring Cynthia Erivo and, um, uh, and Ariana Grande. And uh, so I'm doing that. I have a bunch of TV projects that were up and running um, that we're about to go shoot. Um, one that we just finished, um, Thai Cave Rescue for Netflix. Um, that is the kids' story. Um, we got the rights to their stories and their family stories. So I'm excited to, to do that um, and, uh, and show that to the world. And then I'm, uh, I just joined in a totally different type of chapter of my life. I joined a, a company um, called We, which is an Asian e-grocer, uh, where they make deliveries of Asian groceries. Um, I'm the chief creative officer now, so that's a that's another part of my brain. I was surrounded by food as the medium of story growing up in a restaurant, so it feels very appropriate uh, to be uh, sort of coming full circle with that after having done Crazy Rich Asians and In the Heights, where food was so uh, beloved in those movies and seeing the power of that, that actually to work with a company to deliver actual ingredients to your house that you've learned from your parents or your grandparents that you can pass on to your kids uh, seems like a great place to uh, tell more stories through. So that's what I'm doing. It's a lot of, a lot of different things. That, that's amazing. And uh, I, I think I did read about it and I will certainly uh, check out uh, Check it out. Down the app. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, yes, absolutely. Um, so I'm a walking dad now. <laughs> uh, yeah, pl plug that uh, grocery delivery app. Um, so with with Wicked, did did Ariana and Cynthia actually audition for those parts, or were they already connected to this project somehow? Yeah, they absolutely auditioned. You know, part of me was like, oh, I want to find unknowns. I want to go out there and see, because In the Heights, Crazy Rich Asians were uh, not un unknowns, but a lot of discoveries, a lot of people who hadn't had the platform yet and uh, were the best for the roles. And so for Wicked, that's what I was definitely set out to do. Of course, with Wicked, everyone wants those roles. These are star-making roles. Alphaba and Galinda are huge. And so uh, we didn't just get... Uh, no names out there. We got also giant stars to come out and that these songs are difficult. Um, and every single person, there was no easy way in. You had to audition. You had to audition either on tape or with me. And uh, Cynthia Erivo came in. And of course, I mean, there's a reason why she's Cynthia Erivo. When she's in that room and she's singing these songs, it is so moving. It gives totally new meanings to the song. And of course, when Ariana Grande comes in there as playing Galinda, who, you know, the good witch, who's very complicated character. And uh, I'm, she just, she, she destroyed us emotionally. And so the two together are so different that that potent uh, potion of them together was something that was very exciting. And uh, I can't wait for the world to, to see what they, they are together. Yeah, I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing that. Um, so I noticed you didn't really mention the sequel to Crazy Rich Asians on your plate right now. Is there, is there anything you could tell us about? Is there even a script or any production date set aside? Do we know a release year that you might be aiming for? So we're working on the script. We've, ha we, we've had several scripts um, and, uh, you know, the bar is high for me to go back. The bar is high for the actors to go back. And so we're just trying to make sure that it is, that lives up to what we want. Um, the world is also changing. And so it has to have the right resonance. And also the, the second and third books, by the way, people don't often recognize it, but the first movie is very different than the books, uh, even though it's the world and the characters, like the plot line is very, very different. 
And so it doesn't quite match up. So we're finding new solutions of how to how to how to make that. Also, it excludes characters that you probably want to see in a sequel. So um, it's a lot of uh, figuring all of that out. Um, of course, our actors are blowing up all over. Gemma, you know, in Marvel movies, and uh, and Henry becoming a star, and Aquafina uh, becoming a star, and award winner, and all these things. It's just that uh, everyone's working too. So it's um, well when the time is right. I'm sure we'll do it. Well, I, I'm really looking forward to that. And you mentioned Aquafina. I feel like I can't watch a movie without her popping up somewhere in the movie. It's just, it's amazing yes. at how many things she's been in now. She loves to work. That girl loves to work. Yeah. Well, speaking of busy, though, you have a wife and three kids. Um, how old yeah. are they now? Your kids, not your wife. I have um, three kids all under the age of, well, four and under. So it's a busy time. They're all in different phases um, and we're not sleeping. So uh, that's why I can do all these things. That's because <laughs> I have all the time in the world. So, I mean, is, is it difficult for you to maintain that sort of work life balance? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I'm, I'm sure all the students know, you know, you're trying to grow up at, 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 in college and you're trying to figure out your life. You're trying to also not close off the doors to uh, what you may become. Uh, you may think you may be one thing, but you're probably discovering new things about you. Um, at the same time, you have to get productions done. You have to get your movies done. And so that can take over your life. And there are sacrifices that come with that. So um, there are definitely it doesn't change. Uh, as you get older and you have a family and my, uh, but the best part is I have a partner uh, in my wife that is uh, so understanding and we talk everything out and we, we, you know, the pandemic really also helped us carve out time for each other. And, um, and it doesn't hurt to have a few, uh, have something like crazy rich Asians come out and hit the box office bullseye. So it gives you a little room to sort of, choose when you, you can work and when you don't. So um, I'm, I'm sort of coming around there, but it is difficult. And it's, I think it's mostly not about a choice. It's about um, if you really do love your job and my, I'm sure a lot of filmmakers know this for themselves that like you love it so much that it doesn't feel like you're going to work. So I'm just including my kids and my wife in that joy. So my kids come to rehearsal and they get to watch dancing and they get to learn the dances on the side and they get to come to auditions and they get to uh, experience what it's like to build a world when they saw the bodega being built or being on the streets of Washington Heights. It's like, I think for them, it's really, it's just a learning, another part of their schooling. Uh, it's just a very different type of schooling. My daughter actually yeah. asked my friend the other day, they were watching like cartoons and they were watching Little Mermaid. And my daughter turned to her and said, and we had my daughter's four and she said, where where are they putting the camera in this shot? Is it like behind the plants? And how do they get a camera underwater like this? So my friend was very like, this this little girl sees the world in a totally different world than others. So uh, I guess it's, it is what it is. Well, I guess we can look forward to getting uh, three star filmmakers uh, in the next generation. We'll see. I think she just wants to be a princess. So. <laughs> Well, the last time you were at the USC Asian Pacific Film Fest in 2017, uh, we showed a clip of your final student project, When the Kids Are Away, and I'd like to show it again. So to set the scene up, a large group of women dressed in robes come dancing into a kitchen, singing about being housewives.
it is obvious, even as a student, that you were incredibly talented and you've had tr just tremendous success since then with movies exceeding the $150 million mark, including three Step Up movies, Now You See Me Too, G.I. Joe Retaliation, and of course, Crazy Rich Asians. But I wanna ask you how you handled it when your movie didn't quite hit the mark. So in 2015, Gem and the Holograms was a box office disappointment um, with your worst earnings to date. How did you handle that? And what did you learn from that experience? Uh, uh, damn, Sky, you're getting, you're getting deep here. Um... No, I, uh, first of all, I only did two step up movies. The third one I produced, but I didn't oh. direct. And, uh, so, uh, Still Jeff an Longer, incredible feat. It is. Yeah. Yes. We, it was, it's, it's been, a, I mean, step up continues to go. So it's pretty crazy. Um, I, I mean, for, for me, first of all, gem is, is, was not a failure for me. Gem. I love that movie. I think it stands the test of time. I think anyone can watch it. And if you like it, great. If you don't fine. all my movies, you can do that too. Um, I'm very proud of that movie. First of all, the, the movie we made under $5 million. I don't know if you've seen $5 million musicals with 13 musical numbers, uh, uh, you know, that are that elaborate and that well executed. And that's not because of me, that's because of our crew. That's because of our cast. They're so freaking talented. So in my mind for, as an artist, uh, I don't, I, I didn't, uh, I didn't learn a lesson from Jeff. If that's, if that's in fact, uh, I'll give anyone $5 million and see what they can make uh, in that type of scale. Um, what I did learn is in terms of box office, what does that mean to the industry? What does that mean to me personally? And, you know, we're all trained to believe that the box office is um, the end all be all. Uh, but as you can see from something like West Side Story, end all, the box office doesn't matter. <laughs> I mean, it made uh, not that much money for however much money they spent on that movie uh, and it's still appreciated and still loved and will probably maybe win best picture. It got nominated today. So uh, I think for me at that time when being young and making movies, it was like very difficult to uh, uh, see people's reaction to a box office number when you knew that it had no reflection on the, the movie itself, but it did help me retrain my brain to remind myself why I make movies. If you're making movies for box office, well, first of all, if you're making movies for box office now, it's just irrelevant. You're, you're, you're streaming movies, so there's no box office uh, to, to, to be had there. So uh, that even thinking is out the window anymore. But at the time, it, it felt like there was a lot of pressure for that opening weekend. Uh, and as we see now, it's so fake <laughs> because it doesn't matter anyway. But um, so I had to get through that in my, my brain and also remind myself like, if I make movies, as an artist, you make something and then you let it off to the world. And what the world does with it is their business, not yours. Like you can have opinions about your movie all you want, but if, but if they didn't like it or they don't share it, then that's, then that's what it is. But you at least did the thing that you came there to do. So that actually gave me freedom um, in making movies like In the Heights, like Crazy Rich Asians, to not actually uh, be burdened by the weight of will people go see it? Crazy Rich Asians, if I had that burden on me, Crazy Rich Asians doesn't happen without Gem and the Holograms. Because if, if, if I'm scared, too scared to make Crazy Rich Asians, which I was very scared um, because it could mean the same, very easily made the same reaction. These days, it seems like, oh, you can make a Crazy Rich Asians. Back then, which was only four years ago, by the way, it was, it was impossible. It was like you couldn't, no, no movie was going to be made like that. Um, and, uh, and so, uh, I, I really credit, uh, Jem to help readjust my purpose, um, and my relationship with my own art. Uh, so anyway, I, after going through that, I can make something like Crazy Rich Asians. I can make something like In the Heights, where you just know there's no proven factor for that. People may show up, people may not show up. Uh, but you got to do the work. So I'm very proud to have gone through that experience and, and count it as a badge of honor. I, I think that's actually a very valuable lesson that you've given to aspiring filmmakers out there that it, it can be blinding always just to talk about box office when that isn't necessarily 
the only way you can measure the quality or success of a film. So I think that's that's something all aspiring filmmakers really need to keep in mind. And I'm glad you yeah. can share that with I'm us. That, that argument is just dead now because you really doesn't like tick tick boom and all these like nobody has box office numbers on tick and tick boom did get released but it was but it's on netflix first and foremost so it didn't you know those those things are uh hopefully a, a dead conversation right well um your your movie uh in the heights right that's the film adaptation of lynn manuel miranda's tony award-winning musical um ended up being released during the pandemic simultaneously in the theater um, yep. and on HBO Max. So I don't know if you'd care to share your thoughts on movies and streaming or what happened with that, but but where do you think this is, this is really going for movies? Well, I think we don't know yet, um, uh, but for us, it was a very tricky time. We were supposed to come out the summer of 2020. Yeah, summer of 2020, pandemic hit in March, so uh, that was right, you know, a few months right before our release. So our plans got all shifted. Uh, we had to wait another year for our movie to come out. Um, and during that year, uh, movies shut down. Nobody went to the movies. There weren't even movies released. Everything went online, as everybody knows out there. People didn't go to school. Um, and so uh, when they, and then they announced the hybrid uh, version of a release, which had not been done of releasing the movie day and date on HBO Max and on theaters. So now I knew, we all knew that uh, the traditional reporters were gonna report a box office number that doesn't reflect how many people actually saw the movie because we're giving it away for free on HBO Max. Um, and we weren't selling it the way Disney Plus sells, you know, some of their movies at that time with an extra, I think for Raya they charged extra for, um, another movie they charge extra. Um, so we were just going through transition. I think we're still going through transition. Um, and, um, you know, I love cinema. I actually love the game of, I love that we're putting on a show and we got to get people into the, into the seats. Um, and so I like that game, even though it can be a dangerous game. Um, I also love the idea that we share an experience together in a theater and you have no opportunity to turn on your phone and talk. I mean, some people do that, but like you, you're, you're not supposed to, and you can't just go cook in your microwave while something's happening. You can't pause and come back. Like it is a agreement with the audience that says, we're asking for two hours of your time and you're gonna pay us for that time because there's value in this time. And we have had this agreement with people for you know almost a hundred years and with streaming it is different the agreement is different it's thanks for their money here's a bunch of stuff for you to watch and hopefully you like some of it and maybe if you don't then skip it it's not for you which is a fine thing i watch a lot of streaming stuff but it is a different way of watching something and um in a way it's uh and, and by the way again i love streaming i watch it all the time but I don't want cinema to die and I don't think it will die. You watch, I mean, Spider-Man, obviously people are showing up. It has to be a different thing now to get people, to compel people to go to the theater. Uh, what I'm sad about the sort of, um, the sort of change in cinema that I see happening in front of us is the big surprise. Something like a Crazy Rich Asians that changed the landscape of what kind of movies these big studios will put money into, what kind of actors can become a pop culture phenomenon um, because of it. Um, those movies won't have the opportunity to surprise people because it will already be relegated to the content side, the side where everyone just gets it and someone will find it. Um, so that makes me really, uh, really sad because there have been some great surprises in the box office that the audience has found and determined is worth the time. And others uh, that the studios and the people with the money say are worth your time and nobody shows up for. So it goes both, it cuts both ways, but I'm really, um, I, I hope there's a medium ground that cinema exists um, and yet there are still chances taken 
on some of that because there's still a lot of work to change things. And if we go into our own silos and watch whatever movies we want and it never permeates the bigger culture, um, uh, I think that that's hurtful for, for our growth as human beings. Right, well, it's, it seems like the only thing that is driving people to the theater right now are superhero movies. And um, you would think that, uh, you know, musical, um, musical films would be like the next step in bringing people back. But, you know, even with, we see with West Side Story that that didn't quite happen yet. And I'm, I'm really pushing and hoping for Wicked to be that one that really brings, uh, brings the audience back to a non superhero movie. I love superhero movies, but really there just has to be more in the theater than, you know, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. But the reality is we can only blame ourselves. Like the reality is it is the audience. And if the audience isn't showing up, I mean, West Side Story was prime example. We made more than West Side Story. We made a million dollars more than West Side Story opening weekend. And the fact is people didn't show up. So what's the signal to Hollywood? That's not a Hollywood saying, oh, that's we're not going to do anymore. That's like the audience, us being like, it's not compelling enough for us to go. And maybe that's because it's a remake. Maybe it's because... I don't know, whatever reasons that we may have. Um, but I think we have to support the things that we want to see out there. And uh, and there is a uh, tendency now for us to get what we want by a push of a button, wherever we are. And that's fair. I order, I just ordered Postmates. I'm down, I'm down, I'm, I'm all for that. But, um, but there is a result to all those things, uh, especially in our art. Right. Yes. Well, speaking of art, you are working on an adaption. Well, this I read of Dr. Seuss's Oh, the Places You'll Go, which mm -hmm. would be, I think, the first um, animated feature that you've worked on. Yep. So it, am I correct? It's going to be released in 2027? Why, why is this going to take so long? <laughs> Well, you know, animated movies take a long time. It doesn't just happen. Um, they usually take like four years. And uh, I'm also doing Wicked at the same time. So I, we figure that it'll match up. But, but I don't even think we have an official uh, uh, release date. I, I'm not sure where you got that release date, but, but it's probably around there anyway. I mean, Wicked itself will take several years. So um, that's, that's animation. It takes that long. Um, and we're doing it with uh, Bad Robot and Warner Brothers and the Seuss um, estate. And so I'm excited, but, uh, uh, and sometimes we don't like to announce the, you know, us getting on board these movies until later in the process. But these days, sometimes information leaks early. And so you get a reaction like, wow, it's gonna take so long. And I'm like, well, you're not supposed to know for another year. <laughs> well, I don't know, I've read it all over the place. So everyone well, seems to know you're doing board. this. <laughs> but yeah, no, they leak. So you, leaked you, it haven't even started, you haven't you haven't started pre-production on this then has anything has I anything have. started on it oh you have in terms of the script going yeah uh, not I like pre production shoot it's a it's an animated fully animated movie so it's a it's a different process than shooting we work a lot on the script and storyboarding before we ever start to animate anything by the way I this see. is my first so, I'm learning the process well and and so I mean, how are you working through those differences in the, you know, in the pre-production process? Uh, we're just in the beginning. So it's not so different other than the uh, where I put my uh, creative time on the project. Like when you're working on a live action, at least what my experience so far is uh, it's, a, it's a long process. It's a marathon. So you're getting the script in shape then you're bringing in the actors and you're working with them and you're designing. And so it's all happening at the same time. And then when you go shoot, all that gets thrown out the window and then you got to shoot something uh, and hopefully that it all matches up and you discover new things. And then when you edit, it's a whole nother movie you're editing with animation, you know, they're not shooting, they're not animating a lot. And then you have to edit it down. Like they're going to animate what the movie becomes. And so the writing process is a lot longer. Uh, the storyboarding process, you actually make the movie, you actually, Put these storyboards together and show an audience before you animate any of it um and then you rewrite 
and then you redo it. And that can take years. That could take two years, uh, three years. Um, and, and then once you have the movie, then you start to animate. So um, it's a very different, it's almost a reverse process. Like production is now in a way, because you gotta get the, get the movie together. Right. Wow. Well, I mean, you certainly do have a lot on your plate. And so I want to thank you again for taking the time to join us today and to celebrate API Trojans and entertainment. Um, your support is both appreciated and very much needed. So thank you. Thank you. And it's, it's always really fun to be here. You know, um, it's not easy being a filmmaker, as you all know. And it's not easy being a filmmaker that has something new to say and has something important to say in a world where the landscape is changing really quickly and you don't know where your job is coming from. You don't even know where the medium is ending up. So the only thing I can say to all the filmmakers out there, uh, especially you guys right there uh, watching this, is that um, you're storytellers first. And what's your medium of that storytelling can be many different things. It could be commercials. It can be uh, TV. It can be film. It can be streaming. It can be creative directing a an Asian e-grocery store. Like you learn story, learn what connects human beings, and then find the medium that speaks to. It's maybe sound. Maybe it's cinematography. Maybe it's something you do not know yet. But the problem is we get we only know it growing up is that, oh, directing, I got to direct, I got to direct. And that has this like sort of shine to it. But at the end of the day, it's like you're a storyteller. So find that medium, be open to what that medium is because things are shifting. All the advice I'm giving you is like old, old shit. Uh, there's a whole new uh, place that you guys are trailblazing. And so uh, hopefully I will follow you and hopefully your stories will push me um, and, uh, and we'll do this all together. So um, we all need each other in this time. Great, thanks so much, John. Thank you.